for the first time on TV in Southwest Florida, we're seeing the struggle families in Cuba go through just to eat and just to make a living. All of this is especially important right now, of course, as the U.S. and Cuba try to make some sort of agreement that benefits both of the countries. Wake News reporter Alex Shrek went to Cuba with me last week, and this story you shot tonight fascinates me because of how upfront the people in Cuba were with you when you walked down the street. Very open. Everybody we spoke with, whether they were young or old, seemed to be real supportive of the changes. That we drove out to some neighborhoods on the outskirts of Havana. The people we met, again, they said they welcomed those changes, but they don't understand how or when those changes will filter down into their daily lives for simple things, such as buying food. Old cars, tourist-filled streets, music, and even film crews in the 16th century capital city of two million plus, Havana, a city in the world spotlight. The security guard worker just said it's better to have a good relationship between the two countries. Bring it on, he says. Yet his neighborhood is one of the many where long lines wait to buy government subsidized food. The man to my right says he supports the changes. The food he just waited in line to buy? Bread and eggs. Across town, more lines, like this one, waiting for eggs. And for a man at this nearby supermarket, a little ham. A glimpse inside reveals sacks of Argentine rice waiting to be bought by a line of people standing. Many things locals and tourists say they'd be happy to see remain intact for decades to come. A history dating back centuries to when the old world met the new. U.S. diplomats are here once more, twisting the arm of communism, tempting it to loosen its grip as tourists and young Cubans sing praises of changes to come. We need this, I think. While billboards across town spell out victories of the revolution and socialism. Popular, victories that have left Cuba's common people out in the rain. Again, really caught off guard by the candor of those people we met. So many of them told us just how hard it is to live. Nobody can say for certain what renewed diplomacy will bring, but any change in the eyes of these people is enough to bring them hope, Chris. And uh, you spent, of all of us, probably the most time talking to people who live there. What struck you the most? It was kind of cliche, but really it was the people. Young and the old, very open, optimistic. Of course, the older people, a little slower to speak on camera, understandably, mm -hmm. they're still afraid. Uh, those younger folks, no shortage of young people that said, we can't wait for this to happen. Yeah, and it seemed like the younger people are ready for it to happen now. I agree. All right, we'll see what happens more tomorrow. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Chris.